Uh, good evening, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here, and I'm just here this evening because I wanted to do a code review on how to predict on the breast cancer data set using a neural network made from JAX. And I think the last code review that I did, it was a neural network made out of NumPy. And so JAX is a higher level. Um, library than NumPy. It's a lot more powerful, but it's written very similar to um, NumPy's API. And as a result of that, a lot of the functionality in NumPy is same as the functionality in JAX. But there are some differences, and because there are some differences, I wanted to go ahead and um, do a code review on this. Okay, so what I did was I made the program in uh, Google Code Lab, and when I made the program in Google Code Lab, which is a free online Jupyter notebook made by Google. And it's a great platform to use to write programs in Python. The only exception being that Google Colab does not have an undo function. And because it does not have an undo function, you may possibly lose any valuable code if you accidentally overwrite it or delete it. But the way that you can get around that is to go through the search save history and then if you go through the save history, then there's the possibility you can retrieve that code. So now that you know a little bit about Google Code Lab, then what I want to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the libraries. So we're going to import JAX to perform the numerical computations and create the neural network. We're going to import sklearn to provide machine learning functionality and we're going to import seaborn to visualize the data. Now after we have imported our libraries the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to load the breast cancer data set from sklearn. So data equals load breast cancer x equals data dot data y equals data dot target and then you print the shape of X and the shape of Y. So you have 569 examples by 30 columns of data as X and 569 labels as Y. So after we have loaded up the data set, I thought it would be a good idea to make a, a heat map. And I've been experimenting with making the heat map. So I think in the the last video I made on NumPy, I made a heat map using NumPy, but that heat map was just with random numbers. And because it was with random numbers, you know, it didn't really mean a lot. It was pretty, but it didn't mean a lot. So what I did in this situation was I made a heat map using seaborne heat map. So R1, that's just just a random figure that I made, came up with. It was jnp.corecoefx.t and the T means transform. So what it does is it takes the um, columns and it transforms them into rows. So now your rows are your columns and your columns are your rows. If you don't transform it as a T, then what's going to happen is you're going to have like more than 500 rows of data, which is not going to be giving you an accurate description of how well the columns correlate to each other. So, this is how I did it using the, the JAX array. And it's different, like if you were going to do it with a data set, a data frame with pandas, 
it would be core equals um, x dot core, and then it would be SNS dot heat map core, and it would give you pretty much the same type of map, the heat map. But um, Seaborn doesn't, the core command doesn't work with a JAX array or a NumPy, NumPy array. So you have to use the core coef function, which is what we did. And that is a piece of code that I came up with on my own. So you can say that this is my code. This is what I dreamed up all by myself, and I didn't find the code anywhere. So you can quote me on that code if you want to. And then after we've made our heat map, then what we want to do is we want to standardize the data and so the mean is going to be zero and the variance is going to be one. So it's going to be anywhere from negative one to one. So scalar equals standard scalar and that's with sklearn. X equals scalar dot fit transform X and then you've got X. And I personally would not have used you don't have to use sklearn standard scalar. You can say mean equals x dot mean std div equals jnp dot std x, and then you can say x equals um, x minus mean over std dev and that's another way you can do it and i personally would have done it that way but i did borrow this piece of code from somebody and so that just gives you an alternate way to write your code you can either write your code with sklearn or you can write your code from scratch so in this particular standard deviation we're using sklearn and then what we're going to do now is we're going to use um sklearn's train test split to split the data into training and testing sets. So x train x test y train y test equals train test split x comma y test size equals sorry 0 0.2 and random state equals 42. And then you're going to print that out. So the um, Training set is going to be 455 examples by 30 columns, and the test set is going to be 114 examples by 30 columns. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to define the model. And when we define the model, this model has two functions in it. It has a sigmoid function, and it has a sigmoid derivative. So the sigmoid function is going to be make an S shape. So it's going to be either a 0 or a 1. And the sigmoid derivative is always going to be positive. And it makes a little normal distribution at the halfway point of the S shape. So I'll see if I can find it. Thank you. 
to turn your back. Input. 